In this video, I'm going to give you a quick update on my Zygopedalum Luisendorf, but courtesy of Richard Lawton, I'm going to show you two examples of how to deal with a rotting pseudobulb because it seems to be that Zygopedalums that are bought in the store, they might look all wonderful when they're fresh, new, and in that pot blooming and beautifully fragrant, eventually an issue will occur and pseudobulbs will start to rot. So I had that case, but this is a two for one. I'll tell you how I dealt with my case based on my conditions, and I will show you images of Richard Lawton's case and what he did following some instructions, a little bit of guidance, what he found and what his result is as well. So you'll get a two for one regarding zygopedalum rotting pseudobulbs, how to deal with them and not lose your orchid in this video. In many cases, I can answer questions in the comments sections directly. Other cases require a little bit more detail so that I can immerse myself into your environment, what you have available, how your orchids are growing, and including images give me a deeper insight in how to be able to properly help you diagnose and troubleshoot, hopefully to resolve the issues. Well, Richard Lawton filled out my form that I have featured in the Need Help video, and he sent me images, which I then analyzed together with all the information in that form and came to a conclusion. I emailed him back and well, it turns out that his rot was a little bit more comprehensive than initially met the eye. So his measures were a little bit more radical based on his conditions. I had a similar issue with my Luisendorf when she first arrived. I did a video on that because I also had to repot her into my preferred setup, which is Lekka and self-watering and repotting an orchid with a huge wound freshly cut into a setup as wet and yeah, with a lot of humidity around the base is always a little bit risque, but my Luisendorf did very very well and not only that but this year she bloomed for me for the first time much appreciated gorgeousness so you can see that my surgical efforts and my method of removing the rot from the pseudobulb without removing the entire pseudobulb it was necessary in my opinion because my orchid didn't have that many structures when she came and well if i only have 50 percent of the pseudobulb left that 50 percent will provide energy and still function as part of a storage unit until it completely declines and you can see that it has almost almost completely declined and then you see what's going on in the back there the other pseudobulb that was in the video where i had rot starting at the base it was only a small dot a smaller dot of black rot than richard lawton's dot <laughs> let's just put it that way i stabbed into that wound like a woman possessed and i packed that wound full of cinnamon i did not remove the bulb or else i would not have had much of an orchid left and the rot stopped until let's say in may when i noticed that that pseudobulb in the back was going soft again and i thought oh no not the pseudobulb that i did the surgical intervention on you can see how that is c-shaped and curled cinnamon is still packed in there that's why there's a paper towel that is always damp to catch any cinnamon so that it doesn't blow into the pot, thus desiccating the roots. So I have as yet to remove this bulb, but I still have a bit of green there. The problem was the bulb in the back in May. And I thought, yeah, you can see I have another nice pseudobulb here. I've got two little recovery pseudobulbs over there. They don't really provide much energy and strength for the orchid moving forward. So I was just thinking I'm going to leave my pseudobulb as is, seeing as I still had the lower part of the pseudobulb packed with cinnamon. And if the rot were to become even more obnoxious, I can always intervene, but I didn't want to go at it too soon. Many times when we see rot, we have to attack it straight away, depending on the circumstances. My two main reasons for not attacking that pseudobulb straight away and thinking that I was going to get away with it, which I did, was A, I had a nice glob of cinnamon at the base, and that had stopped the rot, and the base is what we need to protect. And if the rot were to progress from top to bottom, it would encounter that glob of cinnamon and stop anyway. But secondly, I was moving into extremely dry conditions. My humidity here in southern Spain drops exponentially, which means that 
I did not have to worry about high humidity perpetuating a problem that at this point in time was not a problem. And I counted on the very dry conditions that were coming while keeping a close eye on the orchid on the daily several times a day of course to help me dry out the pseudobulb without the rot spreading without it becoming oozy exploding smelly ick distributing bacteria everywhere and well tis true tis true in my conditions i am very happy to say that my strategy worked because even now, just because of the video, I wanted to maintain the pseudobulb. But even now, it's extremely loose and I can actually just pull it off. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Because look, you can see right here the hole that I created. You can still see it there. And in there is a glob of cinnamon that prevented the rot from the top that started in May to progress to a place where this could have become a big problem for my zygo. So whatever deteriorated at the top found the cinnamon and well the cinnamon had done its job when we did the initial intervention. And this pseudobulb, thank you for your service, is now nicely dried out. I didn't have to do any kind of surgical radical intervention, which if it can be avoided is definitely, definitely my preferred method of dealing with rotting pseudobulbs. If it can be avoided, no more big wounds, no more cuts, but clearly this one was a different beast altogether. But in Richard Lawton's case, his conditions, his grow environment is different from mine. There's a higher humidity. Once he went into the offensive pseudobulb with what I said, <laughs> a sharp surgical kind of implement, <laughs> he found that his rot had spread in deeper and deeper and he was forced to remove the entire pseudobulb, which is something that will happen, which is something that may need to be done. And for me, that is the worst case scenario. But judging by the pictures that Richard sent me, and thank you, Richard, for allowing me to use these on my video. I appreciate that. This way, people can get two methods of dealing with rotting pseudobulbs in two different environmental conditions. He did a fabulous job of saving the new growth at the one end without damaging any other pseudobulbs. And on top of that, got rid of that offensive pseudobulb. And I'm sure that his orchid is going to be just fine. Now you can also see in Richard's images that in the back the other pseudobulb is very wrinkly. That is because of the energy that is being drawn from it now seeing it is one of the main pseudobulbs still attached to the rhizome providing the rest of the orchid with energy. It is also possible that that pseudobulb will also incur rot at some point in time seeing as it still was in the older media of the nursery pot. In my experience though, Louise and Dorfs are super vigorous because considering what I had to do with mine, <laughs> I think many other orchids would have collapsed after a procedure as radical as that. So all is well in the world of the zygos. And if you find yourself in a similar situation and would like to have a second opinion, also maybe just a confirmation with what is going on with your orchid, I will link the need help form in the description so that you can go there, have a look at it, see what it all entails. And if you think it'll help you out for your case scenario, then please fill out the form. A little donation to the orchids here on the Ninja Orchids channel is always appreciated because there is quite some time involved in getting the diagnosis, writing out the email back to you and making some diagrams where I would suggest to cut, etc, etc. Just a quick video, but I hope that this will be helpful to anyone that is struggling with a rotting pseudobulb on any orchid, not just zygopetalums, just so happens I was fortunate enough to have the same orchid with the same situation. Both were treated differently and both could be an option depending on your environment. If you found this video helpful, I would so appreciate that if you would give me a like. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, then I also appreciate if you would give me your vote of confidence and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate that support as well. I wish you a fabulous day on that one condition though as always that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.